How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today we're going to take a look at the Max Oak hardwired EV charger. Whenever you go hardwired, they can charge up to 50 amps. This means that you need the corresponding breaker and circuitry to hook up to it. Disclaimer here, you need a qualified electrician to install a hardwired EV charger. Today, I'm gonna to show you roughly what I did and it's for educational purposes only. I used to have a 50 amp breaker here and it can charge up to 40 amps. So when you go up to 50 amps, well, you get that 25% more. The 50 amp breaker won't support a 50 amp charger because if it charges at maximum, it will trip the breaker. Now what I did here is install this box. The entire wall is covered with this sheetrock. I drilled a hole in the sheetrock. I know the stud is over here using a stud finder and I snaked a cable. Six gauge, three conductor wire with a ground through the bottom over here and use one of these conduit strain reliefs to hold the wire in place. And I actually had to open this hole up a little bit in order to screw this nut in. These are not live wires or anything and it's ready to be wired in. I bought a Simmons 70 amp 240 volt breaker ready to be placed in this first position. All the high amperage stuff you want as close to the incoming wire as possible. This is L1, L2, this is the 220 volt. Neutral is here, ground is here. Those two tabs one of them is L1, one of them is L2. So this 50 amp breaker connects to both of them as well. I bought this six gauge wire at Home Depot. These conduit strain reliefs at Home Depot. This box is from Amazon, 70 amp breaker from Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the video description below for where to get these, not for doing it yourself, but for reference for your electrician so they can install it for you with these products. For these knockouts, I've used a hole punch and punched out the inner circle and the first ring. You just punch out whatever size that you need. If you're punching the second ring, you got a punch that way just to make sure the rings that you want to stay is not going to come loose and then as soon as it comes off you wiggle it a little bit and it falls out these clamp things is called a clamp connector i'm using three quarter inch here this box is not actually a breaker box all it does is connects this wire to your hardwired ev charger and it comes with this plug thing which is just a jumper and you connect that right there line in comes in the center and this connector jumps from here to here and also here here to there, connecting each one of these wires individually to this post and that post. I already pre-stripped this, so I'm gonna connect it to the breaker. L1, L2, this is in the off position. Push it in, okay. Now we can energize it. Nothing happens, okay, this is a good sign. Now for safety precautions, you should not stand on any pools of water. You should wear shoes that are insulating. That's just in case if you touch a live wire, the electricity won't run through your body. This is live right now, let's test the voltage. 246 volts, so that's good. We're gonna turn it off, we're gonna measure it again. 0 0.9 volts, so that's what we expected. So now when it's off, we can snake in the EV charging cable and connect those electricity points. Here's something I don't do often is remove these to make extra room in the panel. Now we got two more spots. Put the panel back very carefully. This is a live panel, so we gotta make sure we don't touch any hot points with this metal thing. Just like that. So it's on. Now we can mount the charger onto the wall. I'm gonna mount it a little bit offset from those previous holes. Put the shaft of the drill bit right over the anchor. And I want it to be just a smidgen smaller because when you drill into the drywall, it makes a hole slightly bigger and you want a snug fit for these things. Roughly gauge how far you need to go in. I like to dress the cable so it's completely not twisted at all. So it bends nice and round. It's not like this, right? You see right there, that's bent a little bit. So I'm gonna turn it this way until it has no bend in it at all. And it's actually kind of tight for me to hang my wire. I used to hang it over here, but I have this box here now. So I guess I could just kind of hang it right here. And to make as big a loop as possible, I'm hanging it relatively high because I like to have like two or three loops at most. So let me put in that cable holder. I wanna bias it this way slightly. Double check. I'd rather have it go that way than this way because this is the walkway here. This is the cable holder. It looks pretty standard to other ones I've seen. It's just a piece of plastic. <laughs> 
this needs a really long screwdriver. Start it off first. Pretty secure. Not much room in the garage, so I probably won't clip it onto this holster like this. Usually you just kind of put it over like this. So now we just gotta connect this thing. L L1, L2, and ground. Open this up. Make sure it's on AC voltage because if you accidentally set it to DC, even if there's live electricity, you might not register a DC voltage. So make sure it's on AC voltage. And we double check there's no high voltage here. Nope. So we're safe to work on this. Sneak it in there just like that. There's reasonable amount of slack. Put this guy through. In my experience of owning an EV, sometimes you want to charge as fast as possible right before you leave for a trip because you just want more juice. You don't always want to charge your car to 100% and leave it at that because it degrades the battery. So maybe sometimes you leave it at 80% and then you know, oh, I'm gonna go somewhere really far and you wanna charge the rest of the 20% ASAP. Compared to a 40 amp charger, instead of charging for two hours, you only need to charge for one hour and 36 minutes. Put the safety panel on, put the jumper in the on position, close this up. Let's turn it on. It should turn on. Come on. Yeah. Now let's test if it can charge at 50 amps. Press start to start charging. Now we need to start charging on the Tesla app. Interestingly, it's not letting me charge at 50 amps, 48 amps maximum, but at least is eight amps faster than 40 amps. Let's let it ramp up to 48 amps. Let's look at the EV Chargo app. It also says 48 amps, even though I've said that it should go up to 50 amps. Five amps is the lowest. Sometimes you wanna trickle charge it a little bit. This might be the case if you have a little bit extra solar power and you want to not put it back into the grid and you just want to put it in your car instead. If I stop charging on the app, it stops everything. Just to make sure everything is good and not overheating, I'm going to charge it at maximum current for maybe half an hour or so and then check the temperatures of all the wires and see if everything's okay. The incoming wiring is 88 degrees, ambient is around 76 degrees, and this wire is 105 degrees, which is pretty warm. Inside, these wires are getting a little warmer, 118 degrees. The cable going to the charger is 106 or so. The charger itself, 100. The output wire is a little bit warmer, it's 112. 112 there. The connector is 95, but we're more interested in the cable here, 113. Touching it, it is a little warm, but not hot. So these wires are relatively thick. Six gauge wires. This is the one I've been using before, this hardwired one. And there is one noticeable difference, which is the thickness of this wire. The Max Oak is about 0.57 inches in diameter. The competing one is about 0.71 inches in diameter. I decided to charge with my 40 amp charger. Previously, it ran for close to one hour and charged about 41 miles into my car. I've charged also 41 miles exactly in the car so far. So this one outputting at 40 amps versus the Max O outputting at 48 amps, because there's less amps putting through it, it's going to be cooler. Over here, it's also 105 degrees, just as warm as before actually, right at the neck right here. And this one is at 104 as well. The cable on the floor, 104. The breaker, 125. And then the charge plug is 84. The cable right at the charge plug, around 100 degrees. And the previous charger is kind of cooled down already. The 6-50 wall plug is at 126 degrees. Measuring the diameter of the wall wire size is a little bit misleading because you really want to know about the cross section of the metal instead. My previous charger was charging at 40 amps versus the Max Oak at 48 amps. You're pushing 20% more amps through it. So you might assume that it might increase in temperature maybe 20% more. There's a lot of thermodynamics going on. When you heat something hotter, it actually dissipates more. The end result though is that even though we're pushing 20 amps more, it increased about 10 degrees Fahrenheit 
for the charging cable. All of this is within spec. It does run a little harder because you're charging a little bit harder. If you guys are interested in this Max Oak EV charger, it's made by the same company as Blue Eddy. They also make a lot of different kinds of power banks. If you guys are interested in getting one for yourself, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.